Hello, welcome back to uh, Welcome Home Humanity. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a controversial subject, the uh, much talked about uh, Gillette advert. And there's plenty of stuff on YouTube and elsewhere about this, uh, the pros and cons. And for those who haven't seen it, then please have a look at it first before I'm, uh, I discuss it here and I'll try and put the link down below. Um, basically, it is uh, a two-minute uh, Gillette advert uh, expounding exactly how good men should be. Uh, we should be as good as we can be. Uh, and this continues their advertising slogan that they've had for many years uh, and adapts it the best that man can get first of all Gillette the best the man can get that uh, flows and scans and also uh, now Gillette the best the man can be and I, I'm just when I was doing my little bit of shaving this morning I noticed in my Gillette blue 2 plus uh, package um, the word best comes in a lot so that's some branding and it appears then therefore Gillette is uh, associating their brand uh, with this movement of improvement of, of men and, and in many ways who can knock that. That seems to be um, a good thing to do and uh, both for men and women and children and humanity of course. However when I looked at it I, I felt uneasy. Um, I was wanting to like it because it actually is a lot of the work that I'm doing. It actually um, addresses the issue that I address a lot, uh, the abuse uh, of children, um, both men and women, and the effects of that abuse on future generations. Also the apathy uh, of those who see this happening but don't act, and so as far as I can see it, the advert is split into two parts. The first part shows all the bad behaviour and the second part shows um, how we can rectify it by all clumping together. So that part is good, but it still left me feeling uneasy and I didn't exactly know why to begin with until I thought about it. Now, over the last year or two, many of you will know that my focus in my practice has been largely, but not exclusively, um, because I have to see everything <laughs> and everybody who some, comes to see me. But actually linking the chronic conditions that I see, both the emotional conditions and the physical conditions, with what I'm becoming more and more understanding of, which is complex post-traumatic stress. And complex post-traumatic stress uh, can come as the result of narcissistic abuse, um, insidious over long periods of time uh, and bullying both in the home situation, personal life, at work or by institutions. And what I've learnt from exploring this with many people, men, women, all ages, is that everybody's story is unique and by going through the story and listening that's the most effective thing I can do in adding support as people join the dots uh, in fact uh, healing occurs. It may be that for some of them uh, we because we see people in our home act in a way uh, that is non-judgmental and welcoming and basically homely so <laughs> that's a good thing uh, and that might be helping as well. One of the to help me with this uh, early on I discovered a great website called Out of the Fog, which deals with people who are suffering from complex post-traumatic stress. And I print off um, a few pages from that for people to look and highlight to see if it applies to them. And I won't go through, it's very, it's, a, it's really great. It's called What It Feels Like to Live with a Personality Disordered Individual. You can see the links between this and, and that advert. <coughs> 
at the end, it tells you what to do, and I think I've explained that listening um, in a non-judgmental way uh, is very helpful, uh, and that each story is different, that you can't necessarily generalise. Before I just read out a little bit of this, I, I have to probably mention that the other thing that has become uh, a huge focus for me is, a, is an understanding that we all carry shame. Shame, S-H-A-M-E. And that the way we behave uh, as humans to other people, uh, to other humans, uh, both as therapists and as friends, and somehow uh, must not shame. We must not shame. And that the perpetrators uh, of um, abuse may have been shamed before. In fact, many will share a shamed experience, uh, adverse childhood experience. They've been shamed, just like the majority of those who carry shame. In fact, shame has been infiltrated, has been We've been imbued by shame when we have trauma. But some, and a very small minority, become bullies. They actually become people who project shame onto others. And so we must act in a way that we must not risk shaming. And one thing this advert does is that it says that uh, some of us uh, behave well and it's up to some of us to convince the majority of men and I'm questioning that because in my experience the majority of men that I'm seeing have been shamed they're not bullies um, the bullies are outnumbered by uh, the compassionate gentlemen people who put this into practice and so this advert risks shaming a majority and I understand for a, probably a good outcome but I don't think the means justifies the end and so what this excellent website and its uh, and, and its section on complex post-traumatic so, uh, stress disorder says is this that we, it explains what we should do and it also explains what we shouldn't do. Uh, we shouldn't hold it in, bottle it up, act out, isolate, self-abuse and perpetuate the cycle. What should we do if you know someone else has this complex post-traumatic stress? We should op offer sympathy and support, a shoulder to cry on, a lend an ear. I think I've said that. We should speak, speak from my, our own experience. I think that's very important. Um, that we empathise um, and be honest about how we have felt this before as well. Assist with practic practical resolution when appropriate uh, and uh, we've got to be patient. All right? That's something that maybe um, big advertisers aren't um, too keen on being patient. We mustn't push our own agenda. We mustn't proselytise. Now, proselytise means, let's say, evangelise. It was first used in the English uh, language in the 17th century and had a distinctly religious connotation. I'm quoting from a dictionary here. And it meant simply to recruit religious converts. We mustn't moralise. We mustn't speak in absolutes. We mustn't generalise. We mustn't tell them to get over it. And I think to give this advert its due, Gillette its due, it's not saying that. And we mustn't offer surefire cures. So my concern is that this advert is preachy, that it assumes that the majority of men, because they are men, have a problem which is toxic and therefore are the projectors of shame. And I don't think that's the case. And I think that it is 
somehow somehow making it more difficult for people to face, for young people to face the what's at the roots of their problem. It is after all an advertisement to increase the profits of a razor company and maybe for that reason it will become very successful. Thank you. Bye.